Hi, and welcome to A Drums Guide to the podcast all about the things that it takes to be a professional musician, aside from actually playing your instrument. So, today, I'd like to hopefully, in theory, today's going to be a quick episode, partly because this is the end of my block of four that I've recorded today. I've done two very long ones, and uh, it's coming up to lunchtime, and as you know, I, well, if you're new here, maybe you don't know. If you're new here, I love food. <laughs> I love it so much. And um, I am really looking forward to having my lunch as my reward for recording these episodes. So in theory, it's going to be short, but we'll see. Um, so today I just want to address some beliefs that I see coming up so often in the conversations that I have with musicians who are looking to go pro. And these are either sort of um, hobbyist or semi-pro or about like about to go into college kind of age, that sort of thing. Uh, and they come to me with these firmly held beliefs. And I'm just like, who's who told you this? <laughs> who told you this? And it's It's not... That's not the case at all because they come at it with these like their absolute beliefs like this is what I should be doing. This is what I need to do. If I don't do this, then I can't be a professional. And it's it's not ideal. It's not ideal. Um, some of them are actually really detrimental to having a career. <laughs> so um, I just thought I'd, I'd address them in one concise episode let's see concise is such a fluid word for me i feel so let me just get into it um and i'll try and expand on these a little bit in my with my own experience some of which honestly i don't have so i can't uh i can't give you much but i can give you what i see and what i have experienced so here we go right the first one is probably the most common um and that is the idea that you need uh, a degree, a certification, a certification, that was weird, certificate, certification, <laughs> or uh, some sort of qualification to be a professional musician. This is the biggest misconception I ever hear. And every time it happens, it shocks me. Every time I'm like, who's told you this? I don't understand. Whilst I think, you know, there is benefit, obviously, to get in, uh, to getting it's not even about getting a qualification for me. It's more about getting the information. But a qualification, unless you're teaching, because I know that in the UK at least, to teach in various scenarios, you do need a certified uh, qualification. You can tell how little I deal with being certified as anything <laughs> or any sort of qualification. In saying that, I am doing a degree right now. But it is so not true. <laughs> I mean, it is a way to get very um, concise information, which is great. And I think that there's great benefit in that. But the actual qualification itself, like say a degree in music, no, absolutely not. If you spend three years getting a degree, whilst I'm sure you will get some beneficial information, in my opinion, just my opinion, as someone who does not have any qualifications apart from uh, my grades, so I have up to grade eight in drums, which I got when I was 15 and I've never used in the 22 years since I got it. Is that right? Yeah, 22 years since I got it. Never, ever. No one's ever asked. I've never, ever used it. Um, yeah, as like, I, I can't even remember what I was saying. Anyway, the qualification itself, not useful, not even slightly, but in those, that's what I was going to say. So in those three years that you might be, say, getting a degree, in my opinion, there is so many other things you can do with that time that would be more beneficial. Now, in saying that, what I will say from what I've seen, because again, I never went to study music. Um, I did A-level. <laughs> that's not served me in any way shape or form uh, in my professional career but uh, what I will say is that a benefit of doing a degree uh, or going to music college or wherever it is for any amount of time is that you will meet other musicians that are of a similar age have similar aspirations um, potentially similar goals so in terms of uh, creating a group of like-minded 
musicians that are aiming for something, I think it's beneficial. And there's a lot of people that I have worked with that their main, the main people that they call to get on gigs are still people that they have met from uni or college or whatever else. Uh, is that a good enough reason to go to college? I don't know. I couldn't say. Um, it's the only reason I personally may have done things differently were to make a few more contacts. But do I think I've missed out? No, because how did I spend my three years after school? I I was out playing like as much as I could. I was probably playing four or five gigs a week. Um, and that was covers, that was originals, that was being paid, that was for free. So in a way, I was, say, the money that you would spend on a degree, I was spending on getting experience and then eventually getting paid to get that experience as well. So that was nice. <laughs> when that shift ch when that shift happened, that was a lovely thing. That was a very nice uh, thing to happen. But um, I just, sorry, you'll have to forgive me for a second. I just wanted, yes, I am. Uh, I suddenly got the fear that I wasn't recording. I don't know why, very strange. Anyway, so that's the first misconception that, like I say, the amount of people that come to me that say, well, I can't have a career if I don't have a degree. Sorry? <laughs> Sorry what? No, absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. It's just a route you could take. Now, the second misconception is one that I've heard about, I've experienced when interacting with other musicians, um, and it piggybacks off the last one, which is by getting a qualification or by getting a degree, you are entitled to work, to a career. You can just walk in on a gig and people are going to want you instantly. No. Again, I don't know who told you this, if you think this, and I'm sorry to be harsh. But no, that's not how this industry works. Qualifications don't mean diddly. What does mean diddly is... Uh, knowing people, getting out there, playing. To me, there needs to be time where you tread the boards, as it were, where you build up your craft. And that cannot be done in a classroom. It can't, I'm sorry, it can't. It needs to be done out in the real world, on stage, with other musicians, in studios, with other musicians, playing to audiences, with the red light on and you're recording, like it, it's, and with people outside of your institution because the thing is when you're in that kind of bubble it's all very controlled it's all very with a purpose you know you've got to bear in mind that the 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 tutors the higher-ups who i mean look i don't know how these things work but what i do know is that they have their own agenda in terms of they want to pass a certain amount of people there are certain subjects that need there are certain tick boxes that there are there are elements that they need to hit that each student needs to understand that they can then relay and 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 you know whether it's they create something in a practical exam or maybe it's a written exam or I don't really know because obviously it's different in every different scenario but it's all very controlled and everyone has their own sort of thing targets that they need to hit you and your teachers and whatever else. But in the real world, there's so, it's it's chaos. <laughs> it's chaos. And what it becomes about is adaptability. So you may be taught, right, this is how you do things X, Y, Z, right? And that's fine, that's a way to do things, but that doesn't make it the way to do things. And by getting out into the real world, you realize that, okay, that is one way to do things, but I've had to adapt it, so now I have ABC that also does the same thing, or EFG that also does the same result, like gets the same result. But the only way that you can do that is by getting out into the real world and getting some experience. So, and that is the thing that's gonna make you more employable, more desirable. And like I say, I think getting a degree or studying formally is a great way to get information and get a foundation, but, there needs to be real world experience on top of that and sometimes that means coming out and doing stuff for free or for not very much money but if you know that you're developing your skills it's so worth it if you know that you're developing your network it's so worth it um so yeah i think this idea of like like i said i see so many people coming out of uni or college and they expect to get on a big gig that's paid and paid nicely and all of this. And I'm like, dude, 
you need to get out on the scene. That's all you need to do. Like, it just isn't how it works. It isn't how it works. Don't get me wrong. Occasionally, of course. Outliers of, yes, fine. But they are the unusual lucky ones. But even then, let me tell you from experience of, again, this is seeing other people, when you have that kind of luck where, say, you might even still be studying and you get on a big gig, because you don't have that foundational knowledge and experience, when that gig ends, which it will, because all gigs end, one way or another, it will end. If you don't have the foundations to land on when that finishes and you're shaky, that is gonna be a problem down the line because you're not gonna A, have the foundational uh, knowledge or resilience I think is the right word as well as network to pull from and draw from and go right I know how to do this I know that when I don't have any work I know how to get more work because I've just done it I've done a lot of it and that's how it works and it's back and forth and back and forth and back and forth but it's fine I know I can rely on myself because I know how to do this and if you if you haven't experienced that and you've come straight out of college straight onto a big gig let me tell you that is not that's going to be a very rude awakening when it happens and yeah so i think there needs to be that grind if you like i actually don't like that term but that grit that you need to get the like just the difficult times of really like you need to struggle to learn how to do it basically and you're not going to do that by just popping out the other side with of college with a bit of paper in your hand going give me a job it's just not it's not how it rolls it just at least in my experience maybe i'm wrong i don't know it's just what i've seen just my opinion as all of this always is right so the next um misconception that I hear a lot and again I feel like these are often uh, not excuses that's the wrong word reasons that people use to kind of step away um, and they can use it as a, as a reason not to rather than like I don't know to feel safe in the knowledge that they don't need to venture into the scary thing it's scary it's scary doing this thing it is it is the payoff is amazing and when it starts working the feeling that you get is like nothing else like and but you do need an element of like fire to keep you going when things are tough and things will get tough and things will feel awful and you know I can't even tell you the amount of times I've been terrified um, during my career but I can sit here and go it's been so incredible so far and um, and I hope it continues to be for the next however long it's been since I started playing it's been 26 years I've been playing now oh my gosh <laughs> so yeah I'll take another 26 that would be nice um, so the next uh, sort of misconception that I hear or destructive belief if you like is that you need to be able to read music I, this is a fairly new one to me that people have been saying to me and I'm like where have you heard that like I couldn't read music properly like to a professional level up until four years ago <laughs> I'd already played with a lot of people at that point and there's only one gig no okay let me be honest there's been two gigs in my life where I've had to read the first was a uh, amateur production of Annie get your gun when I was 18 I got the charts till maybe like two weeks before so that I could read through them and learn them as the songs not as the charts I, I mean I did I could read them very slowly but I just translated it because I was so anxious about it and I was like I need to have them beforehand anyway and then I learned how to read properly on the voice kids in 2019 five years ago so you don't need to read look the way that I see it reading is a really useful tool and if you for me I need to feel motivated to learn skills so the voice kids was a perfect example where it was just like right in order for you to take advantage of this opportunity that's being presented to you and grab it with both hands you have to learn to read so therefore I guess I'm learning to read like it's just that was the barrier that was in the way of the opportunity that lay on the other side of it and I was like this is not even an issue a hundred percent I guess I'm learning to read it wasn't even a question for me um there was a voice in my head going bah, you don't know how to read but then the rest of me was going well there's only one way to learn so um 
yeah it's 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 a tool it's a tool and if you want more reasons to be employable learn how to read but if you're anything like me and there's nothing uh pressing about it you don't need to you have, as long as you can do the job that's the main thing if you want to learn to read put yourself in a position get onto a show get onto some sort of stage show mostly read uh get into some classical recording situations mostly read get into some function bands they have reading gigs as well do some jazz gigs where you're having to use the real book or whatever um there are ways around it but yeah it just depends how you want to go with it but let me tell you it's not a reason not to do it it's not a belief to have that that means that you can't be a professional absolutely not some of the greatest players that i know that i look up to don't read absolutely not they just haven't done it they don't come from that generation they haven't felt the need to i'm sure if they felt the need to they would it's just one of those things like at some point things happen and you go well i guess i'm doing this now i guess i better learn and that's it you just go with it so maybe the opportunity will present itself but it is not a reason not to do something let me tell you now you can get that excuse off your table <laughs> <laughs> um, again, like I say, it's one that I used to use as well a little bit. So um, another destructive belief, I believe. And by destructive, I mean destructive to yourself, to your own well-being, to your own progress, to your own success, whatever that means to you. So another one that I hear a lot is that uh, social media is saturated. Now, look, yes, there are a lot of people on social media. That is no, like, secret. But no, it's 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 really not. Bear in mind, you see social media through your eyes, through your algorithm, right? So the stuff that is presented to you is the stuff that you watch and la-di-da-di-da. So of course you think your social media is saturated if you're a drummer and you're only looking at other drummers watching drumming videos. Of course you think that because yours is. Your social media is saturated with other drummers. However, if you use it in a way that you are trying to present yourself and speak to your ideal artist, musician, client, student, whatever it is, you, saturation is nothing, it's now to do with it. It's like, so for instance, on my social media, I, the people that I'm looking to talk to are people that are looking to be professional, become professional, are semi-professional, are students, that sort of thing, and they're trying to get to the next level, right? So, therefore, I am just talking the way that I talk, and the people that stick around are the people that it resonate with, resonates with, even. Um, and therefore, I don't think that social media is saturated because there is only one version, or one version, there is, <laughs> that makes me sound like I could be a clone, there is, one of me and that's it and i say things in the way that i say them i present my ideas in the way that i do i have my own experiences that i share no one else is me in this world and therefore how can social media be saturated if you are just yourself i i it literally makes no sense to me if you're trying to play other people's games okay yeah fair enough if you're trying to be someone else fair enough that probably feels pretty difficult and pretty saturated but instead, focus on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to create, what you're trying to post. If you're posting for likes, wouldn't suggest that. That's a really um, difficult place to be in mentally if the reason that you're posting is for adoration and for acknowledgement. Not great for mental health, not great for your psyche, not great for your self-esteem. I really wouldn't recommend it. However, if you have a bigger goal in mind for instance if you're looking to post on social media so that you can get on more tours well that is a very legit goal and to me that is going to be a very different thing for you to post let's say you're a drummer if your goal is to be on more tours you ain't going to be posting you raging around the kit absolutely not because that is not desirable to an artist that is not desirable to other musicians. However, posting videos of you grooving, feel, oh, that kind of, mm, that kind of thing when you're playing and it makes people go, oh, that's ridiculous. That's what you want. That kind of song-based or you're 
posting things of you performing live on stage, bringing the energy, like this is what I can bring to your gig. Look at this energy, look at this performance that I can bring to your gig. And that is in the vein of your ideal gig. Then I'm all about it. But again, that is not saturated. That is you speaking to your ideal follower, basically. Think of it like many to one relationships with people. You're just putting yourself out there going, hey, how you doing? I'm here doing my thing. If this appeals to you, get in touch, let's talk. I'd love to come on the road with you. But if you're looking just to get eyeballs and to get attention and to get likes, yeah, that's saturated. And that is a lot of novelty and that is a lot of viral things that you might get one post that, you know, gets you thousands or even millions of review, uh, reviews, millions of likes. But what does it mean? Nothing. It means you entertained people for 30 seconds and then they forgot about you. So? I don't know. It just doesn't hold any value for me. That's my personal opinion. Um, and again, this kind of, again, brings me to my next sort of destructive belief, which is this thing of on social media specifically, that you need more followers. I need more followers. Why? Why do you need more followers? I don't understand. To me, follow, like followers for followers sake does not make sense. Like it absolutely doesn't. Why? What, what's a number? Number doesn't mean anything. What does matter is who your followers are. So are they, for instance, let's go back to the drummer thing. Are they other drummers? Okay, yes. They're a thousand other, they're all drummers. Okay, cool. So are you a drum teacher then? Well, no. Mm, okay, well then that's probably not gonna be useful to you. If you are a drum teacher, that's fantastic. You're nailing it. You're absolutely nailing it. And having a thousand drummers on a drum teacher's profile who are learning things from you, fantastic. So valuable. However, if you're a drum that's looking to get on tour, whilst I will say that I have gotten gigs from other drummers putting me on gigs and depping for them and all of that, um, I'd say that that's probably not your ideal target audience. Who you want are people like musical directors, you want producers, you want artists, you want other musicians, not drummers. You don't want to impress drummers. Why? Why? It's not, what's the point? So you can have a hundred thousand drummers on your profile, but yeah, so? <laughs> I'd rather have a thousand other musicians who are on the road touring, who are looking at my profile, who are looking at my posts, and when the time comes and someone says, oh, we need a drummer, and they go, ah, Emily, because I've just posted something and therefore I'm top of mind. Ah. Also, obviously starting conversations with people on social media, very, very important, but the number of followers, irrelevant. The quality of followers, imperative. So um, yeah, anyway, those are sort of the things that have come to mind that I find are very, very detrimental, almost destructive beliefs for uh, musicians to have, or even creatives to have, that I have come across that I just go, oh my gosh, if you believe this, that is gonna stop you in your tracks. And not only that, how demoralizing. If you believe that you need more followers to be successful and then you get more followers but no more success, then what? Like, then what? You, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a losing battle there. That's a losing battle. So, and again, it's very easy to kind of like, <laughs> as my dad always used to say, or still says, I'm very cold. Um, uh, there's always a reason not to do something. And whilst I appreciate that, you know, we all have those things, I have those things. You know, I find myself saying things, oh, I can't do that because, nah, why don't you just try and do it anyway? Like, I can do that in spite of. <laughs> I can try that in spite of. Um, but yeah, I hope that that kind of gives you some food for thought and maybe make you rethink that maybe you're aiming at the wrong things. Maybe, no, not the wrong things. Maybe you could aim slightly differently at different things with different things in mind. Um, but yeah, anyway, I just thought they would be worth sharing because there are there have been some patterns of certain beliefs that have come up and I just think that they need to be nipped in the bud because you're holding yourself back 
for no good reason. There's no uh, foundations in these beliefs, at least in my experience from myself and people around me. So I thought I'd share that with you. Um, and as I promised, this is slightly the short episode this week. Oh, 24 minutes. I'll take that. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please do feel free to like, share and subscribe. If you'd like to support this podcast, you now can over on Patreon where you'll receive the episodes a little bit early just for you. And um, if you'd like to see any other the sort of mini bits of content that I put out there come follow me over on Instagram at hey Emily drums at hey Emily drums and yeah I hope that you're having a wonderful day wherever you are whatever you're up to and I shall see you next time for another subject all right sending you lots of love I'll see you later bye I'm going for lunch bye <laughs>